So I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay. So let me let me start by uh, introducing. So today we are happy to have John Yu Liu. Am I pronouncing correctly? Actually. Yes. Yes. It's from, it's perfect. From Caltech, uh, telling us about quantum computation and cyberpunk and quantum field theory. Please. Go ahead. Uh, okay. Yeah. Thank you very much for. Uh, for your invitation and for Nima's inv invitation. And thank you very much. It's very exciting to be here to, to give a talk and give you a, a similar talk. So, so my title as introduced, it is quantum computation and cyberpunk and quantum field theory. So the, world, uh, the word cyberpunk and quantum field theory is actually made by me. So it is not a existing te terminology and uh, before I write down it, but uh, maybe you are confused what it, what it means. I, I will explain you what it means uh, uh, very soon. Uh, but before that, maybe you could uh, give a sense of, uh, of what we are doing and what I will present in, in this talk uh, in, um, in, in this plot. So this is a plot is specifically made by an artist for our project. So this is a collaboration we have with a bunch of group members, including John Prisco uh, at Caltech. So here you could say that um, there is a spacecraft in this plot and um, in the spacecraft, there are some people who are trying to do some computations and there are some advanced technologies and some computers and uh, maybe quantum computers. And outside the spacecraft, there is some, something happens in the universe. Maybe this is a a star or a bubble, bubble or something, and uh, and we are trying to simulate something happened outside uh, the spacecraft in the universe. So this is what we are doing. So uh, technically, uh, more uh, technically speaking, this talk is about quantum simulations for some phenomenon in quantum field theory that happens in this universe. So uh, hopefully that's this plot and uh, make you happy today because it's, uh, I, I really, I'm, I'm personally a fan of anime, so maybe they, they, are, they are made in a version, you know, like a Japanese or a Korean version uh, of animation. So hopefully this plot make you, make you feel it's fun and happy. And yeah, so, so let me briefly introduce my background. So I'm, I'm, I'm a grad student, fifth year grad student uh, in Caltech. So um, I was uh, um, I was studying um, uh, quantum information science in theory and also high energy physics and specifically maybe their connections and I have actually three advisors. Uh, so one of the advisors is John Pris Prisco and who is working on uh, uh, originally he's a physicist in particle physics but right now he's one of the uh, main person in the area of quantum information science. And uh, also I have two other more junior advisors, uh, Cliff Chang, who is working on um, particle theory and David Simon Steffen, who is working on formal high energy theory, conformal field theory specifically. So uh, you might be confused. I mean, why I have three different advisors and I might tell you later um, and uh, what I have learned from them and uh, what I'm, wh which kind of science I'm interested in and I want to develop, which is quantum, cyberpunk and quantum field theory. But let me uh, give a very short summary of what is cyberpunk and quantum field theory and tell you uh, a little bit more about my interest and also specifically related to the talk today. So what is quantum field theory? I think all of us are physicists, so we know what quantum field theory is. It is one of the basic paradigm of um, uh, in high energy physics or physics in general, more than theoretical physics, describe the universe. So I, I'm, I'm, I put a, a few pictures here, and this is string theory, this is a black hole, and this is a collider physics, and maybe this is a QCD and quarks, and this is a, represents condensed matter physics, and this is a uh, this is AMO physics and quantum information science. So all of them are more or less related, uh, or were governed by the dynamics of quantum field theory. So maybe you are a little confused in, from a so, so here I write down, uh, I gave some pictures about particle physics and high energy theory, and many of them are directly written 
you know, filter your language. But there is also a few uh, quantum many-body physics examples or quantum mechanical examples and uh, why that's closely related to quantum field theory. So a typical, um, so, so this is a typical question and people have studied in the last century. And one answer and come up with that, which actually defines what is quantum field theory is randomization group and which we are familiar with. So we know that for instance, if you are, if you are uh, in a considered quantum many body physics and in a, 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 with a lattice regularization in, in a long distance, and if we zoom out and we get a long distance physics, we have a continuum filter description the, um, made by quantum filter. A specific example is that uh, um, is, uh, it's conformal filter, which describe many second order phase transition of quantum many body physics or statistical mechanics problems. So quantum filter is really a language also for, uh, for, uh, for condensed matter physics and other aspects of physics that is, uh, it could serve as a low energy description of quantum many body uh, systems. So there are many quantum field theories and roughly speaking, there are weakly coupled quantum field theory and strongly coupled quantum field theory. So weakly coupled field theory are, could be solved by Feynman diagrams and many of them could be, the, uh, of the problem could be addressed Theoretically, they are not that hard because we are just doing some uh, perturbative expansion and, and around the, the, the free theory. So maybe it's easy to address theoretically, but quantum, strongly coupled quantum field theory um, is, is it's much harder than that. So there are several theoretical methods for solving quantum, strongly coupled quantum field theories. Uh, for instance, we have we might have conformal symmetry. We might have integral probability. We might use ADS-CFT and some spatial topology and geometry or supersymmetry, and using this theoretical tools to solve some strongly coupled quantum field theories. But note that those are uh, some only those methods could may only apply to some specific examples. For some general strongly coupled quantum field theory, which does not have conformal symmetry, does not have supersymmetry or so, so on, and we may have face some problems. For instance, like uh, uh, if you are interested in some low energy regime of QCD, you want to make predictions of the low energy meson and the bound state and using uh, or doing some real time evolution of the system and that and try to match with a low energy collider data. And so that is uh, uh, very hard to do. And currently people are still struggling on solving this kind of strongly coupled systems since there are some general strongly coupled theory, uh, which is hard to study purely theoretically. So this motivated people in, in the last century to, to work on lattice gauge theory and which is a brute force way of calculating uh, strongly coupled quantum field theory and making predictions. The idea is very simple. You just put the quantum field theory in lattice, you choose the lattice regularization. Um, and for gauge theory, this motivate people to study lattice gauge theory motivated by, um, uh, which is proposed um, and, uh, and, and pioneered by some works of Ken Wilson in the last century. And it already make lots of progress. And it, for instance, we could already predict very precisely some regime some, in some energy regime and what is the low energy meson masses in QCD. But so those problems are very hard for a classical um, computation for the current calculation of Monte Carlo simulations. The reason is that the Hilbert space is too large and the quantum field theory has infinite amount of Hilbert space and we have to do some cutoffs. Sometimes we cannot really make um, enough, um, e enough sites and uh, we don't have enough um, computability and uh, based on the current quantum device. So this is actually one of the original motivation of Feynman to propose the idea of quantum computation. So because quantum computation naturally have a large amount of Hilbert space, it could deal with a large amount of Hilbert space. So maybe it is helpful for simulating the universe. So for instance, like simulating chemistry or specifically here, we want to simulate quantum field theory. So 
So these are some basic introduction of uh, quantum field theory. I think many of the audience here are high energy physicists. So probably you are already familiar, familiar with those, uh, but this is just an, an, a warm up and just some simple introductions. So, but this leads to the discussion that I want to make today, what is cyberpunk and quantum field theory? So cyberpunk is a typical terminology in science fiction. And uh, the science fiction, um, in science fiction, cyberpunk usually means a type, a main, one of the main type of stories that uh, maybe in the future and human have very advanced information technology. And uh, for instance, like, like very advanced uh, robots in the future. And many people might be controlled by robots. And um, this kind of imagination is usually belongs to cyberpunk. So for instance, I quote a few cyberpunk movies and games. And for instance, Blade Runner, Ghost in the Shell, they are cyberpunk movies. And this is a famous computer game and Cyberpunk 2077, uh, which is a very new game might appear very soon. So these are cyberpunk stories and movies and games. But I use this terminology to refer to, um, uh, to um, and uh, some, some, uh, my method of solving quantum field theories. So I'm interested, I'm, I'm interested, and I was, I will talk about later, using some cutting edge cyberpunkian or cutting edge information uh, science method to solve quantum field theories theoretically and numerically. And for instance, of course, quantum computation belongs to cyberpunk uh, technologies because firstly it is cutting edge, it is, and a hot um, research direction. And secondly, it's, it's allies in the future. It's like some has some similarity to science fictions. Uh, and because currently we, um, I will talk about later that currently we are still in that development of universal quantum devices. So I mean, interestingly, solving quantum field theories using quantum computation or quantum information science in general, or analog simulation like AMO physics or condensed matter physics. I'm also interested in some classical algorithms and classical methods. For instance, matrix product state, I will talk later, which is tensor network and machine learning, deep learning optimization. So these are some advanced classical methods that is discussed in the cutting edge information science. And I have to use them and to study uh, quantum field theories, maybe follow the path of Ken Wilson and Richard Feynman. So this is a very brief introduction of what cyberpunk and quantum field theory is. And today I will specifically talk about quantum computation. So which is the second, second choice. And uh, specifically, I will talk about quantum simulation for quantum field theories. So uh, that is a very brief introduction of my interest. So until now, do you have any questions? Okay, so let me keep move on. So uh, I, will, I will talk about, uh, uh, let me spend my talk today and it is, this is a talk outline today. So firstly, I will briefly introduce you the current status of quantum simulation or quantum computation. And later I will show you some specific algorithms that to solve real-time dynamics of quantum field theories. These are some, uh, some quantum algorithms that is originally designed by Jordan Lee and Prisco roughly nine years ago. And then I will apply them to study some specific problems in quantum field theory uh, that is motivated by um, um, by um, by uh, uh, by some quantum field theory problems that is existing in the real universe. More precisely, it is related to kink scattering and the false vacuum decay and then uh, or electrowave phase transition in the uni our universe, and which is a typical. Uh, process that is hard to solve and maybe strongly coupled. So I will, it has two layers of the work. And firstly, I will describe some abstract algorithms to solve those problems. And secondly, I will describe some tensor network simulations or classical simulations in, a, in, a, in some toy models. And finally, I will describe the concept, some conceptual issue about quantum simulation problems, and which is precisely the quantum charge turing thesis or quantum extended charge turing thesis that I will talk about later. And finally, I will give some overview on some of my other works and some other future directions. Okay. So firstly, let me briefly introduce the quantum simulation or quantum computation in general. So currently, we are in the error 
uh, following John Prisco that we are in an error which is called noisy intermediate scale quantum, uh, which is NISC, which is called NISC. And which means that currently we are able to manipulate um, the, 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 a large amount of qubits, like 50 or 100 qubits, but our scale of quantum devices is, is limited by noise. We have a lot, maybe have a, a sufficient amount of quantum noise and we cannot really deal with wisely. And, uh, and we cannot, cannot make quantum error correction very efficiently. And currently those activities are still in development. And because they have noise, so it might, might limit some applications. But maybe we are already uh, able to deal with lots of problems efficiently. Uh, and, but uh, but uh, we don't have, still don't have a universal quantum devices. If we, at some point, we expect that uh, the academia and the industry will bring us to another era, which is called photon quantum computation, which means that our quantum devices are able to perform uh, universal quantum computation against error. So it is photon quantum computation with quantum error correction. So that is something that might happen in the future. So, so but currently we already have the NISC device. So for instance, this is a famous photo and about by, by Sycamore in, in Google and which is, uh, which, which, which is a very, uh, which is one of the best uh, quantum processors in the world. And they already show the demonstrates a quantum supremacy experiment and in the, in, in, in the, or a quantum advantage experiment in the last year. So, um, um, so, so, so then because of those possibilities and uh, there are different research to do quantum simulation if we, uh, uh, if considering different methods. One way is that we assume that uh, we, are, we are in the photon quantum computation era. We have a perfect quantum computer that could against the error. And then we could consider designing some abstract quantum algorithms and assuming that we have a good computer. So it might be in the future and the devices, the universal quantum computation does not exist, but it does not stop us to study theoretical problems and designing uh, some digital quantum simulation algorithms when you are simulating some physical systems. Uh, or we could consider NISC application. We could consider our environment is an uh, early quantum computer with some deep noise. So in this case, we could design some algorithm for a quantum simulation. For, for quantum system or quantum field theory, uh, quantum system in general or quantum field theory. So in those cases, uh, so usually those algorithms are versional. So currently we have versional quantum, um, quantum algorithms to deal with simulation problems. And uh, some of them are already implementable in the current quantum computer. So, or we could consider an analog quantum simulation. This analog, the word analog means that um, we are simulating them using some, for instance, some called atomic labs. And basically we directly map the Hamiltonian we want to some Hamiltonian made by some atoms, for instance, Rydberg atoms in a lab. And in this method, we usually cannot expect that we are able to pro program and in general, every possible gates, but maybe this is efficient, sufficiently useful enough to simulate some quantum systems. So there are different ways to deal with quantum simulation. So this is a very simple and short introduction. Specifically, I will describe you uh, today, the digital simulation I mentioned just now, uh, which is that uh, we are designing some abstract algorithms. And later I will talk about possible near-term applications. So to start, so usually uh, for simulating quantum field theory uh, using quantum device or using digital quantum simulation, there is a famous paradigm designed by uh, Jordan Lee and Priskill nine years ago. And it is uh, probably the first paper for simulating quantum field theory is a quantum device. They consider a real-time evolution of a scaring experiment in the simple lambda 54 theory in general dimension. But uh, that method could generically apply to many real-time evolution quantum simulation problems. Uh, usually, they are some paradigm or prototype problems that you could uh, you could you could fit with your actual purpose and to fit your actual quantum field theory are interesting. So usually, it contains the following four steps. The first step is encoding, uh, which is that you have to represent 
your original Hamiltonian, your your quantum field theory Hamiltonian, uh, your field, and to some um, to some to some qubits, and you have to deal with this encoding problem, and it estimates the complexity and the resource of the encoding process. So, for instance, if you consider the bosonic quantum field theory, the field operator is not bounded. So you have to consider how many truncation you need uh, to truncate your field theory space. So that is the encoding. So, uh, and then you have to consider initial state preparation. You have to prepare some initial state to study. Uh, this process might be done classically and or be done quantumly. Classically means that I firstly prepare the state in a classical device and then I compile them to a quantum, uh, quantum computer. So then, so, so then I'm able to run them uh, for further steps. Or you could directly design a quantum algorithm and to, to, for, for the initial state preparation itself. And there are some standard method to do that. And then after that, you have to consider Hamiltonian evolution, which is how to simulate e to the minus iht. So e to the i minus iht could be simulated using digital methods by standard methods and which is called product formula. I will briefly introduce it later. Uh, and there are some other methods, for instance, qubitization or quantum signal processing, et cetera. But these are, some of them already figured out by, um, by computer scientists and um, quantum information scientists. And after that, after doing Hamiltonian evolution, then you have to consider measurement. So how to, how to extract the information you, you want? And uh, you have to consider firstly, what is the interesting physical observable you want? Uh, for instance, if you are interested in, um, in stress tensor or current tensor or energy flux or scattering amplitudes or cross section you want, you have to design your measurement task and your measurement algorithm and which is required to be efficient. So after you have done the measurement, you have done the task. So this is the simple uh, Jordan E. Prisco paradigm, and uh, it is very general and very applicable to other real-time evolution problems uh, and in, in quantum field theory or quantum many body physics or quantum, quantum, quantum system in general. So, and, and then I will describe sorry, specifically- Quick and, question. Sorry, yeah, That's yeah. Quick question. So, sure. if basis you mean the harmonic oscillator basis is that the free? right 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 i gave just sim modes. simply give an example uh and uh I, maybe some of them i will introduce later what it means for instance okay. the gaussian state preparation for an initial state preparation is an algorithm that you could directly con construct a gaussian state and this is usually useful sometimes if we know the initial state is gaussian and then we could use gaussian state preparation algorithms and this Hardman test is also another example to the measurement, but there are many ways to the measurements. This Hardman test is an example which is used in the original Jordan E and Prisco paper, but you, there are many methods to do measurement. And this is an area and which is usually people call it quantum charge. So, so, so anyway, so those method examples are just the simplest example that uh, you might consider, but there are many possible methods you want to choose. Actually, maybe uh, a follow up yeah. question. Are you going to comment on using MPS matrix product states for initial state preparation of quantum field theory or not? Yes. So I will. So actually, the example we will give uh, is using that method. Okay, so, thanks. Yeah, great. Okay, so then I will describe an example of a quantum simulation problem that which is a simulating the kink scattering um, in, a, uh, in a lambda five for quantum field theory in one plus one dimensions. So this is a very simple, but we're also very hard problem. Simple means that it is really a low dimension quantum field theory, uh, but the hard means that it is not solved currently. So, so lambda five four is probably one of the simplest quantum field theory you have studied uh, in your quantum field theory course. But this physics is already very fruitful, especially as strong coupling. So you turn this lambda to strong coupling, and this is a, you, you could actually find some interesting phenomenon that happens, strong coupled phenomenon in quantum field theory. So one example is those kinks. And kink is both existing in this weakly coupled limit and also strongly coupled limit. The kink is an object that uh, is topologically non-trivial, and some people call it domain walls or, or like 
solitons in lambda five four theory. So it is very simple because current this the theory has two vacuum and um, and uh, one false and one true vacuum in the symmetry breaking phase. And then at the left, and uh, you could choose one vacuum on the on the on the on the right, you have another vacuum. So you could do some interpolation in the middle. That will give you a kink. So this plot I made here is a is just a semi-classical kink. It is drawn from a tangent h function, which is solved by the classical field theory of lambda phi four. Uh, but um, um, but but in a strongly coupled theory, uh, that it is not really understandable in, in that way. And people uh, currently even don't know how to study them and uh, uh, understand. People don't cannot understand very deeply uh, what. What it looked like in a strongly couple case, and uh, what has a kink states, or what has a uh, kink scattering process, it is not very precisely understood. So, in terms of theory, so this could also serve as the toy model for cosmic bubbles in the actual wake phase transition. So, it has very fruitful physics. So, that is actually related to many phenomena and in actually related to the real universe. So, that's why we uh, choose. To simulate that, so this is also a standard problem of strongly coupled process. So, what we want to do is that we want to scatter the two king states together and simulate them, design algorithm to simulate them using quantum device. So let's feed the table that I'm uh, I made before uh, for this task. So, so the first step is encoding. Okay, so how to do this encoding process? Uh, well. So uh, encoding is uh, is um, it, it's it's not very easy to do in this case because we have uh, bosonic field theory. So bosonic field theory and so this phi is not bounded. So in order to truncate them, we have to make some estimations. How much error we we might made you know, by digitalized or and truncating the field. So that is uh, that that is could be done in the following way. Uh, we could truncate the field to some maximum field range, phi max, and this might be related to field fluctuations. And we could imagine that if uh, the field fluctuates a lot, it has a large standard deviation, and and then it, you have you might need more qubits, need higher uh, field range. If the field fluctuation is low, you don't really need that many qubits, and because this this uh, the this uh, field fluctuation outside the range is basically empty, so you you, you don't need to make that that many qubits. So the originally Jordan E and Chris Kio did this job by relating the field range to the scattering energy, because you know that uh, fr field fluctuation is directly related to phi square. And uh, phi square is bounded by energy because phi square appears in your Hamiltonian. So using this, you could use the scattering energy to bound the field range and then to decide how many resources you need to do this encoding. So if your scattering energy is high, and then you have to use lar large amount of field range and much more resource. If the energy is low, and then you don't need that many resources. This follows our specific implementation, uh, a, a specific uh, some the, the basic intuition. Uh, however, so this thing could be further improved in our case if we specifically consider a one plus one dimensional lambda five four theory, even in the strongly coupled case. The reason is that we only want some state of the low energy kinks. And the kink is um, it's a low in a strong coupled case. The kink is the uh, the particle and the, the the state with the lowest mass. And in this case, we could actually already estimate the field fluctuations in the uh, in the in the um, in the kink state uh, specifically. So the idea is to use the fact of lambda five four quantum field theory. It is a super normalizable theory, which means that the higher loops are actually converging. So, uh, so, so, so you it's dominated by the one loop contribution. So, uh, so finally, if you did this calculation, you could show that even in the strongly coupled theory, the field fluctuation is actually dominated uh, by the vacuum fluctuation, which is a logarithmic divergence. And then you could use this logarithmic divergence formula, famously in one plus one dimension, and to 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 bound the field range. So furthermore, we know that the vacuum is actually a Gaussian uh, fluctuation in the field basis. 
and it is basically a Gaussian distribution. So we could use Gaussian property of Gaussian uh, to, to estimate and uh, more precisely how many field range um, we need. So that's just the basic idea we proceed in our work that uh, we could actually save a lot of encoding um, um, uh, process. And this is an important for method I will introduce later, which is actually the state preparation. Sorry, question. So, uh, yes. So you truncate the field by phi max, but that doesn't, what, what appears in Hamiltonian is the derivative of phi. So yeah. it's true, the derivative of phi could be arbitrarily large. So you could you could bound the so so firstly it has spatial derivative and you you also has a, a time derivative the time derivative is a field momentum you could bound the field momentum in the same way you could compute the correlation function of field momentum by computing the two point function and for the spatial uh, uh, spatial derivative term you could also bound it in the same way because the spatial derivative term also appears in the Hamiltonian and you could use uh, Use this total energy to bound the spatial terms, and furthermore, this uh, the spatial term could also be estimated in the kink state and uh, directly by the methods that I mentioned here. You could use the kink state directly to estimate how many spatial term you need. So that's the answer to your question. Does does it answer the question? So what you're truncating is in energy, not really field strength, field uh, amplitude, right? So, so technically, we are truncating the field amplitude instead of energy. The reason is that we are currently in the field basis. We didn't consider the harmonic oscillator basis, which is basically truncating the energy. But we are directly in the field basis. Our, all our qubits is represented in the field basis. But it, sorry, I'm, just, yeah. I'm a little bit confused. Just truncating phi by phi max doesn't tell you that the spatial derivatives are small. You need an extra truncation, right? Yes, you need an extra truncation by directly consider the field, uh, field uh, the, the spatial derivative is bounded by total energy because scanning has energy and spatial derivative term appears in your Hamiltonian. So the spatial derivative term is bounded by the total energy by if you demand that the expectation value of your Hamiltonian is smaller, some is smaller than some value, Using this, you could bound the, the, the spatial derivative term as well. And how, how does this assumption serve? I mean, how general is this? Isn't this some sort of a constraint on how non perturbative the theory is? Because it's, uh, it is not, uh, it's re not related to non perturbative uh, uh, mm, physics uh, uh, by bounding it simply through energies because it is simply quantum mechanics. I use, I demand my Hamiltonian is smaller than some value smaller than some value E, and then I use this, I use it to bound the field range and, and the spatial derivative term as well. Okay. Yeah, so, so there is indeed a subtlety because the vacuum energy, it might, might also be high. So here, uh, what I'm talking about here is that I actually extract the vacuum term. So technically what I did is that I extract the number, which is a vacuum uh, term in the Hamiltonian by hand directly. But how to find the vacuum expectation value, I will talk later in this uh, 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 state preparation process. Okay, so, so currently we are doing, um, uh, we, we, are, we are trying to simulate the state preparation specifically uh, using classical methods. And then later I will compile them to the to the to the quantum computer. Why we did this? Because we don't really know how to prepare you the king state directly the quantum computer because they are a complicated topologically non-trivial object. In a strongly coupled case, you don't really have that many theoretical control. But we know that matrix product state methods could efficiently deal with this problem. So idea is that, so this is a simple representation of the matrix product state. So the idea is that basically you could solve them directly by DMRG. So you, 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 you take some bound dimension and then try to do the variation algorithm to solve them and to solve each matrices. Sorry, and then use uh, use this matrices, and if it because we know that the vacuum is translationary invariant, so you could uh, solving the vacuum state in this way. After you solve the vacuum state, and then you could extract the energy by computing the uh, expectation value of the of the energy uh, at the vacuum using matrix product state operator representation 
of the, of the Hamiltonian. So this is a pedagogical way to illustrate this uh, because DMRG is uh, in many cases, it is a pedagogical algorithm because it does not have a rigorous uh, version, rigorous band. Uh, but there are actually indeed some rigorous word algorithm, uh, which is called rigorous DMRG and rigorous RG that uh, I mentioned here. They just, these are done by some uh, com quantum computer scientists. And uh, because currently we are dealing with the algorithm, for usually for people dealing with the algorithm, you have to estimate the complexity efficiently. Uh, the reason is, um, and so, so, so the reason that we use those algorithm is basically because those algorithm has a rigorous, um, uh, rigorous bound on how many, uh, how many resources you need and rigorous bound on how converging the uh, DMRG and algorithm is. And using them, we could actually prepare the vacuum state and zero momentum kink state. So the rigorous RG could be down, could, could be efficiently simulating the zero momentum kink and rigorous DMRG could find the vacuum state efficiently. So there are some interesting literatures you might check, but actually we design algorithm, which is a be beyond what they did uh, because what they did is, uh, is, uh, is does not consider the local shear space dimension. They assume that it is a constant, but in our case, it is not really a constant. Uh, if you consider this uh, truncating pro truncation problem, if you trust the original uh, journey Prisco analysis, this is actually bounded, the local Hilbert space size is related linearly uh, to, the, to, to, to the number of sides. And if you do this in this way, you plug in the formula of the rigorous RG or rigorous DMRG, you will find an inefficient, inefficient algorithm because your uh, local Hilbert space dimension is too high. But if you consider further simplification by assuming that the state is Gaussian and assuming that the supernormalizability work and the vacuum fluctuation is dominated by a logarithmic term, if you assume that's true, and then you could approve, you could prove that uh, the local Hilbert, uh, Hilbert space dimension you need is actually only logarithmically related to the total number of sites in the system. So in this case, you, we prove that the algorithm and the described in those paper are efficient, which means that these scale as quasi polynomially in one plus one dimension. Quasi polynomial means that uh, uh, it's uh, it, it is a polynomial plus some logarithmic type corrections. So uh, so uh, using those algorithm, uh, so so using those algorithms, uh, we could efficiently uh, constructing the vacuum and zero momentum kink state. So there are some methods to uh, further methods that uh, uh, for preparing those states, but uh, I don't have time to discuss. A specific method is some energy filtering method that could actually directly give you some uh, kink state with momentum. And it is given by some combining some rigorous DMRG algorithm and some energy filtering algorithm that is designed by some quantum information scientists. But here specifically, I want to describe another uh, interesting algorithm that is, that is motivated by physics itself that could make the kink move. Assuming that this method I described here has the capability uh, to simulate, to construct the zero momentum kink and compile them to the quantum devices. So then uh, you could consider using some quantum algorithms to directly accelerate uh, your kink. Uh, in the in the in the in the in quantum devices, a natural candidate we are looking at is actually a quantum algorithm that is motivated by some early thought experiment by Coleman on false vacuum decay. So the idea is to add some new Sorry. potential. Sorry, can I ask you a question about your last yeah. slide? I think it seems like you're. Sure. Sure. Yes. Yeah. So to, I guess I have two questions. One is yeah. that what was this um, Gaussian? Uh, assumption is that an assumption? Yeah, what is the assumption? So assumption is that the state firstly the state look like Gaussian, which means that the in the field space in the, in the field in the field basis the solution of your kink uh, look like a Gaussian distribution, roughly look like a Gaussian distribution, which means that uh, uh, the tail of your field fluctuation you could measure. For instance, your the two point function is bounded by 
the Gaussian tail, which decays super exponentially. What is the justification for this? Can can uh, the, the reason is because the two point function in your field uh, field basis, you measure the two point function. Even in the thrown coupled case, they are dominated by the vacuum fluctuation in the one plus one dimension. The reason is because the theory is super normalizable, which means a higher loop of conversion. But the leading order contribution is given by the vacuum type fluctuation, which is uh, which is um, uh, which is logarithmic. It's a logarithmic divergence. And the second term you compute it, you compute uh, uh, in a one loop is suppressed by the logarithmic term, and the higher loops are convergent. So then you could uh, then we expect that uh, even if in the strongly coupled case. The field function is dominated by the first vacuum term, which is logarithmically divergent. So you could use this logarithmic divergent term to directly to estimate the field fluctuation, even if it's a strong coupling. So, sorry, maybe maybe it's a simple fact that I'm not quite following. Uh, so you're saying that it's vacuum dominated because it's super normalizable. I completely agree. Why are yeah. the why are the vacuum fluctuation in strongly coupled theory always Gaussian? Is that a true statement? Uh, it's because the vacuum in the if you consider the vacuum state of the field the, uh, of the free theory, it is a Gaussian distribution in the vacuum, right? So in the in the free yes, theory. but you have and, a strong coupling. And then you turn on the coupling. The coupling comparing to the leading Gaussian term is always small because your fluctuation is dominated by the vacuum fluctuation. So you could assume that even as a strong coupling. A couple of case, the 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 non gaussianity is relatively small comparing to the Gaussian term. So maybe maybe I'm not quite following, but maybe we could discuss this after your, your talk. Yes. And another sure. question is that uh, in the next slide you had um, what next slide? Yeah. What is yes. so I know what DMRG and rigorous DMRG are. What what do you mean by rigorous RG here? So rigorous RG or people call it RRG is a rigorous realization of, uh, of the RG, uh, of DMR, DMR, uh, DMRG method. Uh, in the following sense, that uh, rigorous RG different comparing to D rigorous DMRG is that they could directly give you the, for a gap system, it could directly turn you a bunch of states, which is at the low energy. So they all, not only give you the ground state, it could also give you the first and a few excited states up, uh, up to some assumptions. So that is the difference comparing to rigorous RG and rigorous DMRG. So in the, in the standard DMRG, you assume that the states that you have have a uh, Area law, right? Constant. They have. Yes. Uh, yes. And yes. Is, is that assumption modified in rigorous RG? What is the report? Yeah. What is the, it, it, the? The assumption is not modified. It's just a different algorithm. So the algorithm is that uh, you 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 could not only using this algorithm you could not only uh, give you give you the ground state but also some low excited state. So but you're, you're still assuming that the entropy of a reduced density matrix is bounded by a constant independent of the size, right? Uh, right. So, so that was okay. always assumption, which is a typical uh, typical situation in the one plus one dimensional system. And uh, but uh, but here the rigorous DMRG has a further uh, rigorous RG has a further assumption, uh, which is that uh, the um, the, the low energy sector of the theory is not that dense. It is at most polynomially many state in the low energy sector um, and uh, polynomial in system size. Okay, thanks. Okay, yeah, so these are some interesting quantum computer science literatures I mentioned here. You could take a look on the rigorous version of, of those algorithms. So because usually when we are doing DMRGs, those algorithms are, are heuristic, which means that you don't have a full uh, rigorous complexity analysis, but those papers do realize the complexity analysis and they actually implement their version uh, of their algorithm in numerics, which is a lot of, actually a lot of different than usual DMRG algorithms. So, okay. So let me keep, talk, keep talking about this, um, this moving king story. So the natural idea of Com Com the, the original idea of false vacuum decay paper by Coma is that he add a new potential uh, to the Hamiltonian, which is linearly related to the field. 
So, and if you add the new, uh, new potential and he proved that semi-classically, all the energy you have added is released to the kink to make the kink accelerate. So in, in the semi-classical limit where he called same wall limit, that actually all the energy you add is making the, the kink accelerate. So, and using this, you could simply using uh, um, make some analysis on the how many how much energy and how many speed how much the kink uh, speed up in the spatial relativity and then you have a good control on the on the on the simulation so so and and by directly you could add this potential directly to the Hamiltonian and make the real time evolution uh, of the Hamiltonian by the digital uh, simulation method of e to the minus IHT I will I will briefly mention later. So uh, you, could, uh, you could prove that that works in the weakly coupled limit. And uh, using this, we design an algorithm based on adiabatic state preparation. Uh, and, um, and it works pretty well, but that only works in the weakly coupled case. We don't really know if this works in a strongly coupled case. Uh, so there is no guarantee that in the strongly coupled case, we could accelerate the kink using this way. Uh, but this is an interesting thought ex experiment you could uh, consider, that you could measure the potential violation of the Coleman's assumption beyond the same wall limit in, in the quantum computer by directly measuring the energy. How many energy uh, you, 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 you are observing when you are, you are accelerating the kink? So this is an interesting quantum algorithm that is actually from some old fashioned physics paper, so which is pretty interesting at least for me. So, but uh, this is one possible uh, method we could try, but there are some other algorithms to accelerate the kink that, which are completely rigorous, even in the strong coupled case that I will, I don't have time to talk about later. But uh, finally, uh, we will put the, so currently the paper is uh, in progress. One of our paper, it will, uh, it will be two papers and one of our papers probably will appear in December. Uh, but uh, but uh, you could check more detail in our paper. So after the state preparation process, then let's assume that we have accelerating, uh, accelerated the kink, and then we could consider the Hamiltonian evolution. And the Hamiltonian evolution, that part, uh, we don't really have that many original contribution because it could already be efficiently done uh, by some digital simulation method, which is called the product formula. So the idea is very simple. It is called the Lee Trotter Suzuki formula in quantum mechanics. That you have a bunch of local terms and a bunch of terms in the Hamiltonian, and you directly apply e to the minus IHT is hard to simulate uh, if the Hamiltonian is complicated, but you could always decompose them to some smaller terms, which are easy to uh, to simulate, and then you product them together. Of course, if the Hamiltonian does not commute with each other, it will introduce errors, but we could split the time to be small enough. We consider some small time, uh, uh, small pieces of time, and then in each small time pieces, we do the simulation, and then we merge this time together. So this is the typical idea of trawler simulation in the literature for simulating real-time evolution of the Hamiltonian. And you could prove that uh, it is efficient. In our case, we estimate the complexity, which means that how many gates you need to simulate this process. And it is efficient in terms of the error and also the system size. So, so usually this Hamiltonian simulation algorithm is usually believed to be, uh, to be a computationally easy case for quantum computers. It belongs to the P class, uh, PPP class, and, uh, but usually it is believed to be not in the P class in, in the complexity theory. So, um, and so after doing the, but of course there are some other methods to, to do it. For instance, there is a famous recent algorithm which is called quantum signal processing that could also realize uh, the quantum simulation. And maybe in some cases it's, it is more uh, efficient than Trotter simulation. And so I basically finished the introduction of our algorithm for abstract simulation of kink. But we actually did some simple simulation in test networks because we could use DMRG algorithm to solve the kink. And also we know that some, there are some kink simulation real-time ev evolution algorithm, for instance, the TBD algorithm in the tensor network. So we could directly do the simulation. 
So what we technically do is that we, we instead of considering a field theory, consider a, uh, a spin model, and uh, which is the, it is some transfer field IC model with some extra terms with extra uh, magnetic field turned on and also XZZ and ZZX term. And this model, uh, if you turn on, turn near the, the, to the icing critical point, it becomes the same uh, 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 universality class of the lambda phi four quantum field theory. You could also do this in a lambda phi four quantum field theory, but at the starting point, we try a relatively simple model in the, in the, in the spin model. So in this model, it also has kinks, but originally you have to vacuum, but right now you have spin up and down, and you could also construct kink solutions by interpolation, uh, the spin up and, in, and the spin down in the spin models. And using this, we actually could do some fancy simulation of kink scattering in the classical simulation of, uh, uh, of the computer. And then, and then these are some MPS algorithms to deal with topologically non-trivial state, and so we actually could uh, use this, do this numerics and uh, fa fascinating numerics, and actually give some predictions of uh, of this kink collision by measures, uh, for instance, of the decay rate or a production rate of some meson uh, states or kink states in the system. Actually, we did it. We named the system. We named some low energy meson by Kappa kappa bar, which is a king state, and mu is a meson state or topologically trivial state. And we have measured, we measured the production rate of the states using some methods because currently we are completely in the tensor network, so we have complete control. At this point, you have you might have some question. So the question is that because we have classical simulation and we could already have some fancy simulation of king, why we need a quantum computer? So well, the answer is that what we did is low energy scattering, not high energy scattering. So we, we in the low energy case, we just consider some simple kink and solution and we didn't accelerate them to sufficiently high momentum. And in this case, we don't have enough uh, entanglement generation and we cannot produce that many particles. Uh, but in the strongly coupled theory in general, if it is non-integrable, and uh, it is high energy scattering, we might expect a large amount of entanglement and a large amount of particle produced during the scattering event of the king state. If there is no conservation law that is protecting the, some, 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 uh, some, 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 some particle generation, then we expect there will be a lot of particle generation uh, in the system. So, that's what, that's what we cannot simulate by classical simulation. In classical simulation, we can only observe one or two very few amount of particles generated in the process, and we cannot turn on the energy to be, to be very high. If you turn the energy to be super high, you will observe numerically the bound dimension blows up because you have a large amount of entanglement that is generated during the simulation. So technically what we have to do as I described just now is to firstly, uh, prepare the state directly by the matrix product state. And then we compile the quantum computer and then do the high energy scattering in the quantum computer. And after that, we will expect that we could completely simulate uh, the, uh, the system uh, at the high energy scattering. So this thought experiment and this interesting physics simulation we are doing could naturally provide you um, the, a motivation and that uh, to benchmark your quantum device. Uh, because in this case, and, and uh, you, you could estimate how many resources you actually need to make scattering at different energies, which we do give such an estimation in our work. So these are basically finished my work with John Prisco and some other postdocs uh, about simulating king scattering. But after that, I, I, I hope that I still have time, a few time, I guess. Uh, yes, yeah, so I still have a few time. So then I think I'm happy to introduce uh, some further topics uh, that is conceptual questions. Uh, may, maybe you are more interested uh, in about, uh, about uh, quantum simulation in general, which is called the quantum charge turning thesis. This is not related to our research. Sorry, so do we have a question? Yeah. Uh, before you change the topic, 
uh, to you said that with the quantum computer you can simulate this uh, high energy but can you estimate how many qubits you would need to have a yes. result uh so sorry i i cannot hear your question very clearly can you say it again uh, uh, can sorry you estimate you said that you can uh, simulate high energy scattering of the king in the quantum computer yes so can you estimate how many qubits would you need yes Uh, yes. So yes. So so in an abstract simulation algorithm, we do estimate how the resource we need is uh, is uh, is um, is related to the energy scale we are looking at. So of course, it, it, it the high energy scattering should not be infinite and in energy. So it has to be bounded by the UV cutoff of the theory. So what I'm saying is that um, the high energy scary means that I have a very high, um, which is uh, uh, which is a relativistic regime of momentum, uh, and uh, what we did in the abstract algorithm is that we could estimate how many resources we need in energy, and for the tensor network simulation, what we could do is to look at the cons convergence rate of the bound dimension and see how it is related to the energy. If we find some energy, uh, uh, at some energy or momentum, and the simulation cannot be done, and we need lots of computational resources to make the simulation precise, then that means that our classical simulation breaks down and we have to use quantum computers. Okay. So, how many qubits will you need? Oh, so that is a question uh, because uh, uh, thank you very much, and and for that that is the important question. So we we only estimate formally how many qubits you, we need. Uh, we derive some relation and how it is related to the energy, uh, but uh, we didn't plug in numbers. So maybe you want a you you want a number. Uh, that uh, precisely, like if it's 100 or it is 1 million. So currently we cannot tell you, but uh, a more precise analysis of implementing our algorithms in all, all details could give you a precise number. And maybe it could be uh, uh, simulatable in the near-term devices, and, or maybe it is impossible that we have, me we have to use medium of qubits to do something interesting that might lie in the future. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, so uh, then I will briefly introduce you what is a quantum church turning thesis. So church and turning are some, some famous people and in computer science uh, that uh, they address the question, is the world computable or not? So more precisely, they're asking is all the physics world, all the quantum, uh, all the quantum physics or all the physical laws could be simulated uh, using a digital construction of uh, computers, which is a Turing machine. So there's, uh, of course, a quantum version of that. You is the world actually simulatable by the digital quantum computer or the quantum Turing machine? But uh, more, uh, more, uh, um, uh, more advanced progress uh, proposed you naturally some other extended thesis, which is uh, addressing the complexity. So, which is that? Um, uh, which is that? Is the world actually simulatable efficiently? Efficiency here means uh, complexity. It is the polynomial. Uh, if we design an algorithm, and show that the the quantum field theory process or the some other process in the world uh, is simulatable, and which means that either in the simulatable in the polynomial time, and that usually means that uh, that's uh, the the thesis is correct. That the world is computable. So otherwise, it is not computable, which means that we have to use exponential digital resource to simulate some phenomena in the physical world. So that is called complexity theoretic quantum charge turning thesis or quantum extended charge turning thesis. Both uh, statement without, um, uh, without uh, with or without complexity is not proved. So thesis is a word that usually means uh, a statement or a claim. It is not a theorem. So it could be correct or it could be wrong. It is just an interesting statement you could make. So usually people believe that both uh, the thesis are correct. Uh, but of course, there is no proof. And until now, uh, to, to, 
to, to prove or disprove the thesis. Uh, although currently we didn't see any uh, evidence that if there is any violation of uh, quantum extended charge turning thesis or quantum charge turning thesis itself. But recently there are some discussions um, in holography uh, that shows you that maybe there are some violation of thesis. So the reason is because, I mean, in ADSDFT, we know that um, the, the area is related to the entanglement and, uh, but uh, entanglement is usually a computationally hard object that you need exponentially resource uh, to estimate even for quantum computers. Uh, but area seems to be a classical object that is relatively easy to simulate. So does, not, does that mean the violation of church turing thesis in the sense that the holographic mapping is computationally hard? Or there are some actually recent discussions about this in terms of just now I described them in the in the Rui Takanagi formula form, but they are, uh, you could also ask the, the same question for complexity equals volume, that because complexity is also a hard object to estimate, but uh, volume is an e easy object to estimate. So this seems to be violating the thesis. So recently there are some discussion about that, but my personal point of view is that I don't know if the thesis is correct or wrong, but quantum simulation program for quantum field theory could naturally concrete uh, solve this problem potentially. You could design an algorithm to say that, uh, what is the complexity? So currently we show that the kink scattering pro uh, project we have is computationally easy and it's computationally efficient. It could be finished in polynomial or quasi-polynomial time, uh, which, which means that the problem is not that hard for quantum computers. Uh, but potentially maybe if someone in the future finds that in some quantum field theory or quantum gravity task, uh, it has an algorithm that we have to estimate some task computationally hardly, and then that means the violation of church turning status. Both the options are interesting. And I'm suggesting that the quantum simulation program could naturally solve the problem, okay? So there is an example we try to do in another paper I have written this year, which is to generalize this jordan lee Prisco paradigm to the curved space-time uh, and cosmic inflation. I, I don't have time to talk about them today, but we could chat later. So there are also some other pr projects I have worked on some other perspectives of quantum simulation for quantum field theories and including conformal field theory, conformal bootstrap, matrix models, a lot of stage theory and so on. We could talk later about them. And there's some future possible directions includes that you could study quantum simulation for other quantum field theories, for instance, uh, strongly coupled QCD and collider physics, where you could also consider simulating curved space times. And there's a recent proposed proposal I mentioned before, which has quantum gravity in the lab that addressing the analog variational simulation, which might be implementable in the near term. So finally, uh, uh, finally um, you could also address some interesting uh, conceptual question about church turning thesis that I mentioned later. And here, there are some other work I have done uh, with some other advisors uh, that I might, uh, I don't have time to talk today, but we might communicate later. So I have also have some working experience on Ethereum qubit uh, in general, and also confirm bootstrap and also some landscape of confirm quantum field theory problem. And all of them are more or less related to cyberpunkian quantum field theory that I mentioned before, which make use of some advanced classical or quantum information science techniques. So I think that's all of my talk today. And uh, thank you very much for your attendance. Do you have any questions? Thanks so much for the talk. Uh, are there any questions? Yeah, hopefully that I control the, the time in a reasonable way. Um. So I do have one question. I do have one question. Actually, I have two questions. One of them was that you, you, you mentioned a paper by uh, Gifra Vidal and John Preskill about this collision of scattering. Is this paper out? Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a talk. Uh, it's part of my talk that I give. And uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, I'm also attending that project. So the, the, the paper is not out currently. It is expected 
to be out in December. Okay, I see. Uh, are there any other questions? Okay, if there are no more questions, let's thank John Yu. Okay. And uh, uh, we, we're, we're gonna be uh, talking, sticking around and talking more about physics. If you are interested, please stay here and uh, we will chat more of physics. Uh, so John Yu is kindly has accepted to talk for half an hour or something with us. Thanks so much.